Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher and welcome back to Raspberry Pi School. Now in this video I'll show you how you can update your newly installed Raspberry Pi OS to make sure that you've got the latest software for that version of Raspberry Pi OS. Now a quick note for folks that are following along with the Raspberry Pi School video playlist, if you've gone through our Headless Pi video, then you don't need this video. You've already done these steps so you can skip ahead. But if you're a student of mine, you're setting up your computer on the campus network, and you've just finished the video where you've configured your Pi using your MAC address, then the lesson you're you're about to watch is just what you need to catch up with those other folks. So let's learn! Now I've created a document to accompany this tutorial. It contains commands we can copy and paste so that we can work quickly and we can avoid typos. And you can find this document at bit.ly slash headless dash pi, all in lowercase. Now I'm going to assume everybody watching this video has already got a Raspberry Pi set up on their Wi-Fi network. If not, feel free to go back and watch one of the earlier videos in this series. But for everybody else, scroll down to step 7 and then make sure that your Raspberry Pi is powered up. You can do this either by plugging the USB cable directly into your computer, or since your Pi is on a Wi-Fi network, you can just plug your USB cable into a USB power supply if you have one of those. So I'm gonna open my Mac's terminal program, command spacebar open spotlight, I'll just type in terminal and press return, and the terminal program launches. I'll press command plus a few times to increase the font, Windows users, you probably want to use a program like Putty, P-U-T-T-Y, and you can search online to find out how you can download and install that free program if you don't already have it. And you'll have to excuse me, I'm reusing portions from an earlier video, so you shouldn't need this SSH keygen command because we did that in the previous video, so I'm going to fast forward through this. But at the prompt, what you want to do to log into your Pi is to use the SSH command. So at the terminal prompt, you type in SSH space Pi lowercase pi at symbol, and then your Raspberry Pi's host name, the name that you gave it when you installed your Raspberry Pi OS. The Pi that I'm using in this video is named Prof G Pi. Now for my students working on the Boston College Network, even though you're seeing me enter .local at the end here, you shouldn't need to use that on the BC Network. So if you're working on the Boston College Network, don't type .local. If you're working off campus on your home Wi-Fi network, then you probably do need .local. And if you try one way and it doesn't work out, then you can try the other way, either adding .local or subtracting.local. Then press return. Then you might get a few messages here. Some might even seem a bit scary depending on your configuration. You may have some security messages, but you can say yes to all of the prompts. Everything should be okay. Then when asked for your password, you want to use the same password that you had set earlier in your video when you were installing the Raspberry Pi operating system on your SD card. And if everything works properly, you should see to the left of the prompt that you're logged in as Pi, at, and the host name of your Raspberry Pi. So now that we're logged in, we're going to perform the steps to make sure that this version of Raspberry Pi OS is running the latest software updates for that version. Now you don't need to do this every time you log into your Pi, just when you want to double check to make sure that any patches or bug fixes are installed on your Pi. Now we do this by using two commands we see in step 8. Both of these commands use the apt-get tool. Now the first one I want you to copy is this one that says sudo apt-get update-y. Paste that into the terminal, press return, and what this does is it's going to download the updates from the internet. Now we'll see a bunch of text scroll by. Sometimes it might look like it's stalled, but be patient. Now I'm speeding up the video here so that you don't have to wait for my install. Mine took about a minute to run, but your mileage may vary. And then once you're back at the prompt again, we can return to the instruction page. We can highlight this last command, sudo apt-get upgrade-y. Paste that at the prompt, press return. This installs the updates that you just downloaded, but it'll take longer to run. Mine took about eight minutes sometimes it takes as many as 12 minutes again be patient sometimes it looks like it's stalling but just grab a beverage it'll eventually finish up and you'll be returned to the prompt now before we finish up i want to show you how to use the raspy config utility program this is a program you run from your raspberry pi at the terminal prompt to perform some additional configurations we'll use this in future videos you can also use this for things like resetting your password on your pi or changing your pi's host name just so we can see how this works why don't we open this program and check out some of the options I'll do that by launching the Raspberry Pi configuration program with the command sudo sudo space raspy dash config. So this text-based program runs. You can use your arrow keys to navigate through these menus. Press return to select an option that you've highlighted. The system option will take you to a sub-menu where you can change your password and your host name. Use the left and right arrows to select the options along the bottom. And I'll just back out and finish. 
Now there's one more important command I want to cover before finishing this video, that's sudo halt. Now you should type this in whenever you're done using your Pi. Most folks who shut off power to their Pi or unplug it won't run into any problems, but it is possible that if your Pi were writing to the SD card at the time you powered down, you could potentially corrupt data, so sudo halt performs a proper shutdown. Now also remember after you've done a sudo halt you'll want to restart your Pi, so you have to turn it off and turn it on again. But congratulations, you're ready to begin Pi projects. Now if you found this useful, there are lots more project tutorials on my YouTube channel. Liking, subscribing, commenting, and telling others about these videos helps surface the content in YouTube search, so that really helps me out. And be sure to share what you build, I look forward to celebrating your work, now make something awesome!